It's The List and your boy with Jimmy Van and Sean Ross. Ah! With Jimmy and Sean, sell pills for your dong. Make a fantastic song. Make a fantastic song. What's up, you guys? Sean Ross, app, managing editor, FightfulWrestling.com. We're here with Jimmy Van. What are you drinking, Jimmy? An alcoholic beverage. Oh, I see. I see. So uh, some of you may have realized we didn't set up the event ahead of time. We were just like, we'll do it live. We'll see how it works. Because uh, it never worked. For ever since we came up to this room, it hasn't worked. We don't know why, but it hasn't worked. So we're going to abandon the events for the immediate future. Yeah. Maybe not permanently, but for the immediate future, we're going to. Yeah, so we uh, don't rock with the, the Wirecast YouTube setup that we have for, for quite some time. We do, but it's a little bit different. So we're just going to uh, go with go with what we got right here. Why not? We are That's what we're going to do. On YouTube and Twitter. Of course, we are on podcast platforms everywhere. <sighs> Another one of those weeks, Sean, like I say, every week. Are we going to have enough news for the week? Always enough and news. Kudos to Sean Rossap. He's breaking so many stories now that you're giving me so much content, Sean. Before we get started, uh, I, have, I have a question for Sean Rossap. Okay. Are you familiar with family history site, Sean? Like, like Ancestry.com? Yeah, I've, I've done it. Oh, boy. Uh, I'll tell you off the air, but am I ever. Are you really? Oh, I'll, I'll tell you during our interview segment because, oh, yeah. Am really? I? So a few weeks ago, I had some spare time on a weekend. Uh, and so I thought to myself, you know what? I got a little bit of free time. I am going to look up the surname Sap. Okay. And I'm going to do a little bit of research and see oh, what's out there. Oh, is surprise? Might be. Might be. Okay. I'm, I'm like Bob Sap, former IWGP, my third cousin. I remember we talked about that, yeah. So I did some research. Did you know, Sean, that the Sap surname was first found in Norfolk, England? Did you know that? Yeah, I sure did. Did you know that members of the Sap clan were later found in the U.S. and in Scotland and... In Ontario, Canada, Sean. Well, considering I am from the U.S., yes, I did know one of those. That three. one's obvious. That one's obvious. And also in other parts of uh, Canada as well. Ontario was predominant, but also Newfoundland. There's a lot of saps okay. in Newfoundland, Sean. Big um, dogs come from there, and I don't mean Roman Reigns. <laughs> did you know that the first U.S.-based sap settlers occurred in 19... Or, I'm sorry, in 1763... Are... are is what you're about to tell me, are me and Melissa cousins? Oh, well, we're going to get Cousin there. Cousin Melissa. We're going to get there. So did you know that in 1763, Hannah Sapp landed in North Carolina? That was the first Sapp that hit the U.S. Then in 1912, Sean, Mahood Sapp landed in St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. Mahood Sap in St. Mahood, John's Lutheran. How do you spell that? Uh, M A H O U D. Mahood okay. Sap. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Scoop yeah. <laughs> there you go. So then, Sean, I kept on doing a little bit of research because I was just curious. I, I want to get to know my people. You know, I was curious. I was doing some research. I discovered that Sean Ross Sap has a doppelganger. I discovered that Sean Ross Sapp has a third cousin, and can you believe, Sean, that the name of this town, and this is real, look this up, the name of this town is Dildo Newfoundland, <laughs> which makes sense because of the SRS file. It makes perfect sense, right? Sean Ross Sapp has a doppelganger, it's a third cousin, living in Dildo Newfoundland, and I decided to dig into my pocket, Sean, and I decided to bring this doppelganger up to Toronto, Canada from Dildo, right. Newfoundland. And I want to introduce to everybody right now, this is Jacob Sapp. Hit the music, Nigel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's up, Fightful? You can't What's see up? it. Dot com. You got to cut, cut his you window. What's up, kidding now. Sean Ross Sapp, your boy. Not this overrated at all. the dumbest thing I've Absolutely ever phenomenal. seen in my entire What's life. What's up, pretty swat? What What's are up, we awesome? doing? What's up, sec Does this window have to stay up there? 
I can move it. Yeah, I cut Sean. Move, move Sean's I window. Mean, yeah. Move Sean's oh, window. Jesus Christ. Well, I'll tell you what. Look at it, this. Do look at the resemblance. Well, let me say. Look at this I, doppelganger here. I appreciate the hairline on that. I got the widow's peak, the family widow's peak that goes back a little bit. Uh -huh. So I, I'm more partial to the, the hairline on the mask. It's an amazing resemblance, and when I first met this person, I thought, I really got to fly them up to Toronto because the resemblance is amazing. Uh, what do you think, man? <laughs> that that version looks like it eats food very disgustingly and probably <laughs> smokes often. <laughs> and so, you know what? I'm okay. Since, <laughs> since I have such a connection with this person, I would like Jacob Sapp to prove his loyalty by buying me a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> <laughs> How does Jacob have to prove any loyalty to you? You know, I got a lot of things rattling around in my head right now, Jimmy. <laughs> so yeah. I'm, I'm trying to process this. Look at the uncanny resemblance. What an amazing... Well, let me just say, Wow, guys, what a doppelganger. In, in the first six months of this site, what a double Jimmy and I did not speak face to face via video or in person. It's very I have true. No idea his real commitment level to this website. It's true, true. And here we are, two and a half years later, and I'm looking at myself. <laughs> now, here's another funny story, guys. A couple of weeks ago, maybe two or three weeks ago, which makes this even more impressive, my wife comes up to me, who's been with me for 10, 11 years, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it may be looks at me dead in the eye because what color are your eyes and i'm like why would you ask me that my wife a acting like some amateur optometrist and she goes oh no reason <laughs> and then she goes and runs <laughs> to her phone so i gotta tell you when mel told me that she asked that question i was like why on earth would you do that and she said they've been together 11 years i thought she knew didn't well, think she would okay. have to go and ask them. To be fair, my eyes have a bit of a shift to them. There, there's some stuff. But you all went deep. You all, this was quick turnaround. How did this happen so fast? Oh, we have ways. It we takes have ways. wrestling tees longer to make a t-shirt and send it to me than it does for that. And I gotta say, uh, Jacob really outdid himself uh, <laughs> in terms of you know making making sure that the look. I mean the hair. Wow, it's it, it. I was impressed. I was impressed. So I had to bring Jacob here. I had to do it. I had to. Is this you know? going to be one of your dumbass characters like Marie? I guess we're going to find out. Oh yes, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of emotions going on right now, and I'm not sure if any of them are the right one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I hope you like that one, man. This is a unique one. I want to see any other wrestling site pull this one off. It's a unique one. It's so awesome. Disturbing. Should we? I, no, no. I'd rather people not aggregate my face, if if at all possible. I think one time is enough. Maybe, maybe we'll post it. Maybe we'll ask one of our people to post it on Reddit or something. I don't know. We'll see. Why? No. We, <laughs> we we will not do that. We do not do that. No, but I mean, we'll ask like one of our loyal people. Hey, do me a favor. Put this up on Reddit. Why? Why? Why do they want to see that? They don't give a shit about that. I think people might want to see it. I don't think they care. I think the people that want to see it will be here and they will, they will see it. We don't need it on Reddit. I think that we should get into the wrestling news. Uh, and if Jacob has anything to contribute, then Jacob can. Uh, I don't know if he can be with us for the entire broadcast, but he's definitely here for the first part anyway. So we'll get into the wrestling news. If Jacob wants to contribute, more than welcome to. Does Jacob so. have a rat tail? What's going on back there? <laughs> I guess I guess borrowed the Santino Morella style. Remember the Santino Morella from back in the day? Yeah, I a do. full hawk and a rat tail at the same time. I probably had a rat tail when I was like four or five. I mean, I was I was alive in the '80s. So there you go. All right, we're gonna get to the news. I I, I hope you're over the emotion of meeting Jacob Sapp from Dildo Newfoundland, uh, and that's a real place. Look it up, Dildo Newfoundland. I'm good. So, <laughs> so let's switch over now and get into the wrestling news. And uh, Jacob could contribute if he if he feels the need. Please let's talk no. about let's talk about the WWE brand split, Sean. 
What brand split? Yeah, I know, I know. We got to talk about this. You know, we have long joked about how imperfect the brand split is. We've long joked about how they would say the Survivor Series is the one night a year when superstars from Raw and superstars from SmackDown collide, when we know that it's absolute nonsense. This week, they took things to an even more embarrassing level because they had Roman Reigns, who is now a SmackDown talent, announce on social media that he's going to be on Raw just because just because he feels like it. Then they went, uh, they went to even more embarrassment level by having Vince McMahon announce that there's going to be a wild card rule now. Where yeah. th Go Here's ahead. the thing. Vince was to kick off the show with some big announcement. Right. And then he came up with this on the fly. What yes. was the announcement? I think the announcement was he was going to try to come up with something on the fly. <laughs> and so and so then they announced the, the, the wild card rule. Three can come to Raw, three can come to SmackDown. Then they followed that up after announcing three can come to Raw, three can come to SmackDown. They followed that up by having five show up from SmackDown on to Raw. Then Vince McMahon, Sean, in one segment, we're talking in a span of like 15 seconds, in one segment, he ignored a stipulation and he changed his mind and a 15 second span, which are two things that he's famous for. And th the thing I hate about it is if they want to, they can try to make it a storyline and there will be people that believe, oh, Vince isn't, Vince isn't indecisive. It's all just a storyline. Right. It's right. a well-crafted storyline that they've been right. working for 15 years. Right. It's, point. it's a work shoot. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's very obvious why they did this. They did this because ratings have been at all time lows. They did this because they're getting heat from NBC Universal. Uh, Fox has got to be concerned with where the numbers are. Under two million a week for SmackDown. This is the reason that they did it. Um, now you could look at it and say, well, yeah, they made a big deal of having Roman on Raw. Meanwhile, Roman was the main guy on SmackDown last week when they hit under two million viewers. So he's not necessarily a game changer. But the fact of the matter is, and you just kind of hit upon it, these are issues that have been cascading for 10 plus years. This is not something that happened overnight. They've been cascading for 10 plus years. And now we are seeing the trickle effect where, uh, where this is happening. And what they're doing with this wild card rule, and this is my biggest issue with it, Sean, it's hot shot booking, right? And it makes me think back to the days of, say, Goldberg, Hulk Hogan. Remember those days? Yeah. Goldberg, Hulk Hogan. Eric Bischoff could have taken Goldberg, Hulk Hogan. He could have made it a six-month program that culminated with a match on pay-per-view. He would have done gangbuster business, but all he cared about was popping a rating because he wanted to beat WWE in one week. That's all he cared about. But what have they... But here's the thing. At least Eric Bischoff had two big stars there. <laughs> He had two stars and one of them got made that yes. night. So there was something long-term accomplished there. And I don't see that in WWE. There's so much of the marquee has to be WWE and not Seth Rollins or Roman Reigns. And that, that was the case forever. And I see a lot of people saying, oh, well, just end the brand split. And I'm thinking, no, don't. Because mm -hmm. I covered SmackDown before that. And I would see a lot of pointless booking, a lot of 50-50 booking and stuff that was not referenced a few days later. It was a step above main event. Yes. It was WWE main event for people who uh, mattered a little bit. That's it. And I don't want that. <clears throat> I know Fox doesn't want that. Yep. If WWE wants a successful show, try to build stars. Try to make individuals special. Because I hate to, I hate to let you guys know this. Uh, we don't get a lot of attention for, uh, say... Bellator MMA Europe, just because the Bellator tag is on there. Right. But if Rory McDonald is fighting, people might tune in. They, they like him a little bit more. UFC shows, the bigger the star, the more attention it gets. Sure. And it's the same thing in WWE, right? It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And and again, you know, and I feel like we've talked about this stuff before, but again, uh, Years in the making, these issues that they're having now, years in the making, it's not because of talent injuries, which is what this man said in the Q1 earnings call. It's not because of any other bullshit. It's because of creative issues, and it starts at the top. And when you go back 10, 15 years ago, you already said 50-50 booking. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that Hunter in the past has gone public and said 50-50 booking is a myth. It's not. It's the, fact, not. the fact of the matter is, Every talent on the roster, with the possible exception of Roman Reigns right now, in terms of full-time talent, every talent on the roster, you win some, you lose some. How pumped every are talent. you to watch BJ Penn fight this weekend, Jimmy? You're probably not, because he loses all the time. Guida, though, right? Guida? Guida, yeah, that's fine. But you know who I'm pumped to see fight this, or who I was pumped to see fight? Uh, Donald Cerrone, because he was a star. 
he had become a star, and then then he had a bit of the 50-50, but he's on the come up. He hasn't been winning and losing. He's been winning his fights. Right. That's why you want to see it. If I agree. If you become a star into the stratosphere like a Conor McGregor, like a Chael Sonnen did at one point, yep. you can lose and that's okay. But the problem is they never get anybody there. And if, yep. the, if the situation is injuries, then right now they should be blowing the doors off of everybody. Because here are the people that are hurt right now, Jimmy. Nia Jax, one of the members of Authors of Pain, Fandango. That's it on Raw. Ronda Rousey, mm-hmm. maybe. On SmackDown, you've got Sin Cara, Big Show, Big E, Sheamus, and Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy has a loyal following. Nobody else there. Big E is great. Yep. Not a lot of needle movers that are, are missing right now. So if it's injuries, they should be blowing the doors off of everybody. I agree. I agree. And, and you know, again, uh, not to sound like a broken record, but between the 50-50 booking, win some, lose some, between forcing talent to regurgitate word-for-word written scripts that are written for them by somebody else, not allowing them to, to let their, their personality shine through by giving them bullets and saying, you got five minutes off to the races kind of thing. By doing that, by not listening to the audience, when the audience wanted Rusev to be in a prominent position, when the audience wanted Bailey to be in a prominent position, but they didn't listen because those weren't Vince's favorites, that was an issue. Ignoring stipulations, bro- blowing off programs too fast. Wasn't it Hunter that said that uh, way back when Evolution first split up, Vince wanted to do the blow off the next week on Raw? Yeah. With, with Batista and Hunter. Yeah. And, that go, and that goes back how many years? This is how long these issues have been, have been taking place. This is nothing new, and now they're seeing it. And going back to the brand, brand split for a second, so the brand split was supposed to, there's supposed to be two points to the brand split, okay? The yeah. first point was supposed to be to create more stars because you would have more talent on television if you have them devoted to one brand. So that was point number one. That was objective number one, create more stars. Objective number two, make both shows appointment viewing. Because you would know, if I want to see AJ Styles, I got to watch Raw. If I want to see Roman Reigns, I got to watch SmackDown. Now doing what they're doing, mixing everything up and having guys on both brands. Number one, there's a lot of talent that's not going to be on television, Sean. That's number one. And we've seen that some guys, Rhino being an example, you can offer to double his downside. He wants to work. He doesn't want to sit at home collecting his downside. And a lot more guys are going to be like that. That's problem number one. And problem number two, neither shows appointment viewing anymore. Ah, I I missed SmackDown this week, but that's cool because I saw Roman on Raw anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this, all of this stuff is very problematic. And how are you going to maintain a roster this large? How are you going to do it? There's going to be more and more guys like Revival, like uh, Gallows and Anderson, like Luke Harper, uh, I'm trying to think of who else has asked for the release lately. Sasha Banks, maybe. There's going to be a lot more guys asking for their release because they're not being used because they they're they're loading both shows with the same talent now, and there's no time for everybody. It's going to happen. And the thing is, you've got so many really, really good, talented people on this roster. Just make use of them. I I watched a show last night. Uh, my wife and I started to watch it, and we got about four or five episodes in, and they've built this outstanding character jimmy who has never been on the screen you've never heard their voice but they're a character that you wonder about you hear about and i'm like my god it, was it was it, it the was it the black scorpion the hell's that come on oh the wcw shit yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. watching this will remember oh some people will know who the black scorpion is G- no. give them credit some it people was, it, was, it was a show called dead to me if anybody's familiar with that but like you have no clue anything really about this person you've never seen them but you care about them one way or another right and in wwe they have 52 weeks a year and they make you care less about people when they're on the show than when they're not like for example a lot of people are worried about what's going on with ec3 like man why don't they give him a push if he was on tv i get the feeling they would find a way to make us care less than him not being on TV. Yeah. That's that's the problem there. Yeah, and, and, and again, a lot of the problem too, and again, we've talked about this before, it comes down to insulting the intelligence of the fan base. Uh, and it goes back to, in the 80s, Sean, 
Vince McMahon could, could, could get away with booking stupid shit because most of the fan base, there was no internet. Most of the fan base had no clue what was going on behind the scenes and you could kind of get away with it. In the mid 90s, early to mid 90s, you could get away with it for the same reason. You can't get away with it now. Everybody is on the internet. Everybody knows what's going on behind the scenes. They're aware of everybody's contract status. They're aware of who loves who, who hates who, uh, who's injured, who's whatever. They know everything. You can't get away with booking the stupid shit and they continue to do it. And yes, it's entertainment. Oh, it's not real, it's entertainment. But you still have to come up with stuff that makes sense. And you know one thing that's driven me crazy from forever, Sean? Because they did it again on Raw this week. It drives me crazy when they do the 25 minute promo segments where one guy comes out after the next. It was 30 minutes before a wrestling move was done on that show. And what I hate about those segments when they do it, because lately they've been doing it a lot, and what I hate about it is the fans understand what's going on, so they know that those six guys that just got in the ring acting shocked that the next guy's coming out, they know those six guys are standing in Gorilla together waiting for the music. Yeah. They, they know it. You need to treat the fan with respect. You need to know that they understand what's going on. Uh, and this has long been another one of my issues. Um, Somebody on our live chat says, does Sean even know anything about wrestling? He doesn't know the Black Scorpion. I know who it was. I was busy being fucking four years old while it happened. <laughs> but you you know what it is. I was busy shitting in my pants at that point. Are you talking about when you were watching the network last week? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> uh, speaking of creative... You broke a bunch of stories this week. Now, I don't think we need to go into, into great detail because you already did, like, on the post-Raw show and on the post-Smackdown show. On the Fightful Report podcast, to uh, an extreme degree, subscribe to FightfulSelect.com. I go through all those exclusives, give you additional news. By the way, guys, reminder, Q&A show this week. Get over there and ask questions. There you go. But tell me, so so everybody's probably heard it, so Ryan Callahan, Sean broke the story on him. Uh, the woman with the Emmy Award, what the hell was her name? Um, Jen Pepperman. Jen Pepperman. You broke that one. People probably heard. The one I'm not sure that you've talked about is that, what's the guy from Vice? Dave Schilling. Yeah, about how he was gone in a week. Yeah, gone in a week. Uh, he, from what I was told, he had a lot of ideas. Like almost, from, from what I understand, too many ideas. Right. As if that's such a bad thing, but it mm -hmm. can't be there. And that he thought that he could kind of book everything and change the world. And that's the thing. You can't change the world there. And was out and out the door pretty quickly. Yeah, that's too bad. I mean, uh, politics lead you up in that company anyway, you know. Uh, another creative better element. What's that? It's better him than me. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> we got new sounds this week, Sean. <laughs> So another creative element that I want to talk about, and this is something else we've talked about in the past, uh, is what they're doing with the revival right now. Yeah. Now, now everybody again knows what's going on. They were offered these new deals. Sean Ross Sapp broke the story. They are offered new deals. They haven't signed the new deals. WWE's being petty and they're being childish. And oh, you don't want to sign the new deals? We're going to book you in petty shit on television, and you're going to do it because if you don't, then we're going to add time to your contracts. So you're going to do a thing where you're shaving your back, and we're going to do a thing where <laughs> we're we're putting Usi hot on your crotch and all this kind of shit. They they laugh, but that's really what happened. that's really what they did. I and here's know. He, that's what really what they did. But here's my question for you, Sean, and it's a two-part question. Part number one is, how do they expect other contracted talent that maybe when their contracts are coming due, maybe they're having second, second guesses about re-signing or whatever, how do they expect those people to want to stay when they're doing bullshit like this? That's question number one. And question number two is, do they not think about what they're doing to the Usos because in a program the like this? Because it's the WWE, pal. That's why people will want to stay, right. but as, as we're seeing, some of the great artists in wrestling don't want to stay. No, and, and more than ever, I, I think that there's been more talent in the last quarter that have been unhappy and wanted to leave than maybe at any other time in their history. Jimmy uh, Rhino doesn't want to stay. Yeah, for double the downside too. For double the downside. Now here's a funny thing. I published a story, I think in February, I interviewed Hangman Page and he uh, unleashed the line, I've heard of people getting their guarantees doubled by WWE since we came around. And mm -hmm. like a dozen people were like, he's full of shit. Mm -hmm. No, he's not by the sounds of it. No. Um, 
But Brian the money Barnett has doubled, and he said, "You know what? You know what? I'd rather do. I'd rather wrestle for the next five years. That's and right. Then, then uh, prove my worth even more, and then maybe I could do something after that. I admire that. Absolutely. Uh, yep. Absolutely. But 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 again, going back to the revival thing, the Usos are supposed to be a babyface tag team, right? Yeah. The last two weeks, they've been bullying assholes." by bullying around the revival and laughing at their expense and everything. WWE's not thinking about how they're making the guys in programs with guys that they're trying to humiliate, how it makes them look to the viewer. And I was watching the Usos the last two weeks and I thought to myself, this isn't funny, you guys are just dicks. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's basically all there is to it. I watch it and I cannot believe it. And I, I was joking on Twitter on, uh, on Monday night about clearly Vince McMahon's been watching Revenge of the Nerds because he stole that whole concept directly from Revenge of the Nerds. Uh, but, which is a 1984 movie, which fits in perfectly with Vince's you know, time frame in terms of when he'd be watching you know, stuff like that. It's, it's really unfortunate, man. And uh, I don't know, the way they're doing it is just so petty and I don't know what else to say about it, you know? It's, it's very frustrating is what it is because it can be good. Yeah, and that's what's frustrating to me. And there will be people who hate on it or apologize, make make apologies for it no matter what. I just want to see something consistently good. So far, yeah. Kofi Kingston is consistently good, and that's really the limit to what I can say is good almost every single week. Um, I'll tell you who's good. Jeff Cobb. We spoke to him recently. He just lost the open weight title. But he's a winner because he's here he has- on Fightful.com. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> How long are you with ROH? Is this a, a long-term commitment? I know that you had to kind of wait out the Lucha Underground thing, but then they got a little more relaxed and some other names have, have become available. Uh, what's your future look like in Ring of Honor? Um, I initially signed for one year, um, and that was one of the reasons why, too, I decided to go with Ring of Honor was uh, like Impact originally offered me a two-year deal, and I was, you know, I was – telling uh I think it was Sanjay Dutt at the time I was like hey man listen I just got out of a bad relationship <laughs> with the lucha contract so I was like yeah I really don't want to be tied down for a long period of time right now and um you know they they really wanted to push for the two-year contract and I, I just I just didn't want something long term right now just for the fact that again I just got out of this crazy quote-unquote seven or nine year deal or whatever it was with the lucha contract was and yeah i just didn't want to be tied down for so long were you surprised that there was a class action lawsuit against lucha underground that led to releases um not at all um i mean i wasn't uh i wasn't shocked that i that someone finally i was, I was more shocked that it took this long for somebody to do that um i you know, it was it was good while it was going, and then it just no clue what happened. Like I I I wish I knew what happened. Like you know, like if they would just been more upfront and told us what was going on, I think there would have been a lot more less angry people. Mm-hmm. But uh, a, lot, uh, a lot of people know about your wrestling background. A lot of people maybe uh, don't know that you wrestled guy Yoel Romero, big name in the UFC now. What was that experience like? Uh, well, I was, I was, I think I was like 20 or 21 at the time. Um, and that dude, there was a reason why he was a, he's a Olympic medalist. Like he just throttled the floor with me. Um, but then backstage, he was like a super nice guy. So, yeah. um, there's, I, I, again, I'm not shocked that he's, uh, how dominating he is in the UFC. Uh, he just needed that little time to transition from a wrestler to a all around fighter. And uh, I think he's definitely reaping the benefits. And I think he's like, I, I don't know. I think he's in his forties, but he yeah, looks he's 41. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. He looks really good for 41. He'll be 42 uh, in a month. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. For, for him to be that age and just dominating and how explosive he still is and, and a freak athlete, uh, uh, yeah, more power to him. <laughs> Super Chats, Anakin JMT says, why won't AEW announce how to watch Double or Nothing? Reminder, guys, 
Donate any amount on the Super Chat. We will answer your question. Or you can subscribe to FightfulSelect.com. Ask unlimited questions over there. Um, uh, let, me, let, me, let me jump in. Uh, so in the UK, they did. In the UK, they announced that it's going to be on ITV box office pay-per-view uh, at a cost of about 15 pounds for standard def or 18 pounds for high def. Uh, in the US, I'm told in a week, right? Apparently in a week, they're going to announce uh, the US partner. Yeah, and I would imagine fight will be an option as well. I mean, why wouldn't they be? That's that's an easy digital option. Right. Ace, our friends at Ace Nation Podcast says, do you think Bray should return with a stable? I think it's worth seeing him on his own, how this works. We'll see how it goes. It, it, it looks to me, and I think it was Alex Pulaski on the uh, Raw podcast that said this too, I think it's going to come out that those characters are basically uh, Bray characters, like people with yeah. inside of Bray. I mean, Mercy the Buzzard. Everybody thought that Bray Wyatt was Waylon Mercy, like a Waylon Mercy wannabe. Yeah. And, and, and this week when they did the video and when Mercy the Buzzard spoke, he spoke just like Waylon Mercy. Yeah. So I think that Mercy is a, is a character inside of Bray. The Rambling Rabbit, I'm trying to figure out because obviously he wanted to kill that one. So I'm trying to yeah. figure out who that was. Sister Abigail is an obvious one. I think that they're all characters inside of Bray. Uh, apparently, he did want Luke Harper to be part of it, and uh, Vincent Mann's being just a petty little bitch, and so they're not having more Luke Harper. On that soon. I got more yeah. on that soon. I've been talking yeah. to people closest to, uh, or close to that situation. Also, Anakin JMT asks, how long till SmackDown tag belts become hemp belts? I don't think they will. You know what? I'm so glad you brought that up because I was going to say one thing next. Whenever we criticize something, and I spoke about this last week about AEW, whenever we criticize something, people misconstrue that to think that we hate it. And we're criticizing WWE because they deserve it. I don't hate WWE. Sean doesn't hate WWE. And so I wanted to mention as a positive that I think that Daniel Bryan and Rowan winning the tag titles is a great move. Uh, I think it's especially great for Brian because he lost his, his WWE title rematch on Monday. And so what do you do with him now that he lost his rematch? You make him a tag champion for a while. I think it's a really good move. I want to see eco-friendly belt, Sean. I do too. And I would imagine that the, the replicas are probably selling well, the, the WWE style. I asked for one for Father's Day. Oh, so, uh, Justin yeah. Wally uh, sent a super chat and says, Sean, can you say Steph is the best for my girlfriend watching me? Well, for $5 Canadian, you damn right I can. Steph is the best. <laughs> wow, you went right damn. over it, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, you to doubt Steph. Uh, maybe Jacob can say Steph is the best. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, okay. I, 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 no, I, I should make it clear that because Jacob is from Dildo, Newfoundland, <laughs> they have a really thick accent in Newfoundland, and so we wouldn't be able to understand him anyway, so it's well, probably best. Thing. If, you, if you're running a doppel, whatever the hell, I can't pronounce Doppelganger, it. Doppelganger, doppelganger. of me, making it a mute immediately makes it not believable. I mean, doppelganger technically means that you look the same. It has nothing to do with personality. Yeah, sorry. You, you don't have a beautiful face like that and not chirp about it. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's move on and talk about the XFL, Sean. Now this, Ask let me... You. Yeah, so I, I want to kind of explain this for people. Uh, you talk about rolling the dice, Sean. You know what Vista Man just did with this deal? Vista Man just went to Vegas. He went to a craps table and he rolled the dice because that's exactly what he's doing. They announced this week uh, that they've signed broadcast deals with ESPN and Fox, uh, and they're going to be airing games Saturday afternoons and Sunday afternoons, two games a day, on various related stations. So ABC, ESPN, Fox, uh, FS1. This is a major roll of the dice. There are no rights fees in this deal, at least in part because of the AAF, I'm sure. And I asked Sean uh, when this news broke because it came out that uh, ESPN and Fox are picking up production costs to the tune of about 400 grand a game. I said to Sean, does that cover every game? Because ES ESPN and Fox are not airing every single game. And so I wanted to know, have you found out about that? Uh, I think it, it only affects the games that are being broadcast, not, not anything additional. But um, I So that means that ABC's games aren't covered then? Well, I think that from what I understand, and I could be wrong, I'm still trying to get a little bit of clarity on this. Whatever's broadcast, the TV, the, the games that are aired are covered. Okay. That, that, okay. That, that, that could be wrong. I, you know, I 
still trying to develop some sources within the XFL. <laughs> one would, uh, you mean you can't just go to your WWE reps because it's the same? Uh, uh. Uh, uh, well, I don't think I don't think WWE's PR. <sighs> Uh, would would like to answer any questions. I'm pretty sure they don't even like the fact that it's happening. But I, I'll say this. I'm not optimistic about the XFL, and I'm still infinitely more optimistic about it than I was when the AAF was first announced. <laughs> yeah, so so I, I want to explain this because I know that a lot of people are saying, oh, this thing is going gonna, is gonna to shit the bed, and it might. But here's the situation. Here's the situation. So Vince McMahon committed from the very beginning to $500 million over three years. Right from the very start, he committed that. In this deal, there's no rights fees, there's no ad re revenue either. The broadcast networks are keeping it. The only thing the XFL is getting is sponsorship money from the local venues, which is going to be next to nothing, and the broadcast exposure. Yep. And th and this is where Vincent Mann is rolling the dice. He is basically saying, I am going to spend up to five hundred million dollars over three years. And given these numbers and given the AAF's uh, losses, he's probably going to lose in excess of a hundred million a year. On, uh, on the XFL, but he has said, I'm gonna spend 500 million over three years, and what he's basically gambling or hoping is that he's gonna build an audience because of that broadcast exposure, so that in a few years he can then get a rights fee deal. Yes. Uh, and that's what he's hoping for. Now, this is a major gamble. Now, one other thing I wanna mention, because I saw, I, I read a little bit of stuff on social media, people like to comment when they don't know all the facts, right? And one thing that I read was people said, well, that's dumb because the original XFL was on NBC and it didn't go anywhere. NBC had a prime time deal with the XFL. When you're in prime time, the pressure is about 100 times what it is right in the afternoon. He doesn't have that pressure on Saturday and Sunday afternoons, meaning that they're not going to cancel them after a few weeks. Oh, yeah. They, they right? got drone races and college softball in those time slots right That's now. That's right. That's right. So he's going to probably get the whole season out of the, out of the deal, uh, but he's going to lose his ass. And then the question is going to be again, is the audience going to be there so that he can get a right speed, deal, right speed deal later? I guarantee you, game one, just like the AAF and just like the first XFL, game one will draw a good number. Game two is going to dip. Game three is going to dip. Who knows where the bottom is going to be? The question is, are the numbers going to come back up so that in two, three years he gets that right speed deal? Major gamble that he's taken, but uh, you know what? Good on him for having the, what did they used to say on TV? Giant grapefruit, Sean? Yeah, something like that. I don't know about, I just think it's a dumb idea to put teams where he put teams. I agree with that too, and, and it's going to be more expensive. It's going to be more expensive to run those teams than where the AAF had a lot of their teams. Yep. But uh, that's what he's doing, man. Let's move on and talk about Ring of Honor because this could potentially be big for Ring of Honor. Oh, yeah. Their parent company, Sinclair Broadcast Group, they've entered into an agreement with Disney to buy equity interest in 21 regional sports networks. Uh, it's still subject to closing conditions. They've got to be approved by the U.S. Department of Justice. Sinclair is going to do this under a new subsidiary called Diamond Sports Group. And this is great for Ring of Honor because obviously if it's a sports-themed subsidiary, they're going to have Ring of Honor on every one of those stations, uh, which is going to give them access to a combined 74 million subscribers in those markets it could be massive for ring of honor so oh, yeah and now here's the thing it will be really it would be really good for people who are discovering ring of honor mm -hmm. because the reality is a lot of people are like oh i don't know where to watch ring of honor it's been on their website for years every episode if you want to watch ring of honor and you have access to the internet you can watch ring of honor you might be on a week delay but the tv is often so detached from the paper <clears> anyway that it might not necessarily matter. Uh, I'm really interested to find out how WWE's dwindling numbers affect the upcoming AEW, how it affects Ring of Honor, how it affects MLW, how it affects Impact, who have the Impact Plus service launching, how it affects New Japan and their expansion into the States. I feel like that bubble built and built and built, and it might burst soon, but I think the real indication of whether or not that bubble has burst is going to be what happens with all these companies this year. I think that we won't really be able to tell until that happens. But uh, right now, I think that WWE is quite honestly doing the entire wrestling industry a disservice. Yep, I completely agree, and that actually kind of brings me to my next point. So uh, the WWE just put up the video presentation for this year's Business Partner Summit. Uh, anybody that's not familiar with that, they do it every year, WrestleMania week. And uh, it's where they kind of talk to their business partners about their, their upcoming plans and whatnot. And there were two big things that came out of it this year. One was the new network launch. 
They confirm it's going to happen later this year. They confirm that it's going to include downloadable content as well as multiple tiers, which we've talked about. That means that they're probably going to have those independent promotions that they've already partnered with uh, and show their content on a higher price tier. The other thing they're going to do, and I understand why they're doing it, but I just think it's going to lead to greater saturation. Uh, they've announced that the next two markets for the performance centers that they plan to expand into are China and India. Yeah. And again, makes total sense. These are ginormous markets that they've never been able to properly monetize. So it makes sense that you want to do your best. You want to get you know local training facilities and develop local talent. They're so saturated. So, Who's watching NXT UK? Like, is anybody watching UX, NXT UK? I mean, there, there, there are some people who pretend to when they retweet those gifs that Total Diva Zaps does on Twitter. But uh, I've got a little bit of news about all that. As I mentioned a few months ago, a lot of these new road agent signings were done with the new markets in, in consideration. Right. And hey, you want you want to start in India territory? You got Jeff Jarrett, and you've got Abyss, and you've got Sanjay Dutt, who did Ring King years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've been there. They've they've had that experience there. Uh, also, getting rid of Mahabali Shara, that's good for every market. Let me tell you that much. Uh, the relaunch. So the company had been testing, like doing a lot of research surveys. Oh, I think it was well over a year ago, around Mania last year, maybe the year before. But the initial layout was like a Netflix app with their own style laid over it. But it had, I don't, I don't know how familiar you are with Instagram or Snapchat, but at the top there are like Instagram stories, Snapchat stories for each individual person. The, the, the early layouts at the very least featured those types of things, but for superstars. So if you only cared about like Roman Reigns, you could click on him and you get just a ton of updated content, whether it be from social, whether it be from matches, whether it be WWE.com clips. I think they refer to that as speed of discovery in the, uh, the business partner summary. Yeah, I think that's what they could refer yeah. to that as. And uh, they were clueless on the layout at least <clears throat> the interface as of early this year. But I know that they've been working on this since like last summer at the very least. And, a ton of the focus was put on improving the search function. Uh, by the way, guys, this was all on Fightful Select, I think, in late April. I think April 25th, I reported all this over there. Subscribe now. But <laughs> right now, if you type in, like, just, just an example, WrestleMania 33, WrestleMania 14 might come up. The search function is horrible. And I'm told that the current setup was just not made to handle the type of library and search variability that they have, because that is a massive, massive library. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm told it's going to take like key terms into into uh, into consideration. Like, if you type in betrayal, you'll get like a bunch of heel turn moments. That's at least that's what I was told by uh, some people who were close to this. Very interesting. Okay, let's go to stupid people. Stupid people is what this segment's called You might wonder why we do it It's not about wrestling at all Used to be WWE's weekly usage of stupid nicknames Which we did hoping they'd stop giving wrestlers lame names But it didn't work so we gave up And the new segment we came up with is Stupid people, stupid people, stupid people Duh Okay. <laughs> so, uh, the fact that Melissa doesn't laugh at my jokes but thinks this is funny is disturbing. I don't know wow, why the. What is going on? It's because the light is playing off of that thing weird. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, well, whatever. I'm keeping it up here anyway. So, uh, this first one. I can't get it in the shot because when I do, it looks more like Ty Dillinger than me, and they're not wrong. Uh, it definitely looks like you. Definitely looks like you. Dead ringer. <laughs> so uh, this first one, this was sent in by Scotty Styles twenty nine at Scotty Styles twenty nine on Twitter, reported by the Gainesville Sun out of Gainesville, Florida, on May seven. So this one, Sean, I'm putting this on stupid people because of the law, not because of the crime. All right. I want to make that clear. So yeah, a 23-year-old man out of Lake City, Florida, his name is Dylan Shane Webb. He got pulled over by a sheriff's deputy because he was in violation of Florida state obscenity laws. Did you know that Florida had a state obscenity law, Sean? No. Yeah, they have a state obscenity law. What do you think he did to be in violation of that law? Flip somebody off. 
Uh, he had a sticker in his back window that said, I eat ass. We have it. Put a picture of <laughs> Nigel. One second. I forgot to put a background. Oh, and of course, Nigel forgot to put the, the graphic in. No, no, it's good. Here we are. There you go. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Hats off, man. <laughs> it is ass eating season. Now, to that guy's credit, Sean, because I say good for him, to this guy's credit, the cop said to him, I will let you off with a warning if you remove one of the letters from the word ass. And the guy said, no, it's a violation of my First Amendment rights. I mean, so, it is. Well that's, well, that's what he said. So he actually got arrested for resisting an officer without violence. He got taken to jail, and he paid a $2,500 bail. To wow. get out. Good for you for standing up for yourself, man. Good for you. Yeah, man. And <laughs> the thing is, the officer that pulled him over, what did he really accomplish? What's what's the point of this law? What? He's probably just being a bit all of a right, dick. All right, all right. You know? Are we doing a segment here or are we giggling? He's, he's probably just being a bit of a dick, you know? Giggle. You know what I want to know? I want to know if this could be like a voodoo doll where like, if I go like that, it's going to hurt your nose. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm curious about that. My nose has been broken for like a good 10 years. So. Yeah, it, it feels but, like it, it. It feels anyway, like it. The officer that was looking to prevent this obscenity just <coughs> magnified the situation. He did. Yeah, yeah, it was one of those things. Oh, that's hilarious. It's a <laughs> All right. This it looks like a child from my point of view here is sitting on his lap very lovingly, but it's your head. A child with Andre the Giant's head? <laughs> Is that what it looks like to you? I know. <laughs> All right, this next one. This is reported by WBBH, NBC2 out of Fort Myers, Florida. On May 6th, they're always in Florida, man. Always Florida. You know? <laughs> so a 25-year-old Florida woman, she was pulled over in a traffic stop in the early morning hours for driving through a stop sign. All right? The cop gave her a warning, uh, and then he asked her, uh, is there anything else that I should know about? Is there anything else that, uh, you know? She looks him dead in the eye, and she says, I eat ass. <laughs> <laughs> She responded when he said, is there anything else you want to tell me? Is there anything else I should know? She responded by pulling an alligator out of her yoga pants. Put up that picture, Nigel. There you go. Oh, it's cute. She pulled a one-foot uh, baby alligator out of her yoga pants. She also had a backpack that contained 43 turtles. What? <laughs> what? 43 what? turtles. <laughs> It turned out that her and her 22-year-old companion that was in the car with her, they were, like, hanging out at the swamp that morning. Why was that a footnote on that story? That's amazing. That's what they did. Nigel is losing his shit. He's losing his shit over here. 43 turtles. It's an habit. I've never seen Nigel like this. Yeah. He's, Nigel's lost his shit on this one. This sounds like a live-action Super Mario Brothers movie. Like, <laughs> almost, almost. Well, what? the animals. Go okay. <sighs> I have questions, and I don't know if you're gonna have the answers. I'll try my best. Go ahead. I'll try my best. Did the officer see the alligator? Like, did, did he? Before she pulled it out of her yoga pants. Pants. Before she pulled it out of her yoga pants. Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, yoga pants are traditionally pretty tight. I don't know what this girl looked like. I experience with yoga pants. I'm Where, just, I'm just, that's what happened. Were the turtles alive? Yes. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Yes. <laughs> small, yeah? They, yeah, they were small and they were alive. I think that they had just gotten them from a swamp, because this was 3 o'clock in the morning when they were pulled over. That's disturbing. Yeah. That's what, yeah, almost as disturbing as me generally holding your head in my hands. Yeah, you know? sure. Was the alligator brought out as a threat, or was it? No, I think she probably felt guilty, and she's like, by the way, I have an alligator in my yoga pants. So, that's what happened. So, they seized the animals, they released them. She was given a citation. She didn't really do anything crazy illegal, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, it's Florida. It's not like they're not, they're not around, you know what I mean? So, yeah. That's yeah. Okay, this last one. I'm not sure what Sean's going to think of this one. <laughs> Uh, this is for the SRS file, and it was reported by the Associated Press on April 29th. I don't know if he's going to find this uh, offensive, but we're going to see. <laughs> so, back in 2015, Sean, and, and Nigel will know because he's all into this kind of shit, I think. Back in 2015, a conservative and nationalist government won power in Poland. 
Okay? Nigel's, Nigel's nodding. Oh, he knows this stuff. He knows. Ever since then, the Polish government has drawn criticism because they're trying to make changes to things or they're threatening to cut funding to things because they don't fit into their vision of how things are supposed to be, right? Because it's a conservative government. Uh, one of their targets they is... They canceled WCW Nitro. In Poland, in 20... Well, I mean, it's fair that it might be on there in Poland now. It's possible. Yeah. No, one of their targets is a piece of art film. That's been at the National Museum of Warsaw for over 40 years, Sean. For over 40 years, it's been there. Old Pounders 4. The, the Ministry of Culture is forcing the museum to remove it. Uh, why do you think the Ministry of Culture is forcing the museum after 40 plus years to remove this video? It's porn. It shows girls eating bananas in a suggestive way. We got a clip. Put it up, Nigel. Oh, we have the clip. <laughs> yeah, we got a clip. This is the art film. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is the art film. <laughs> yeah. It was produced in 1973 by an artist named Natalia L.L. It's called Consumer Art. <laughs> and it shows models eating things like bananas and hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> it was supposedly put together as a criticism of food shortages uh, that were taking place under communist rule in the 70s because this thing was made in 73. So it was done to criticize food shortages under communist rule in the 70s. Now, this story in Poland is actually making headline news to the extent that Polish politicians and Polish celebrities are posting pictures on social media of themselves eating bananas. Yeah, I mean, when you said that, I thought it was going to be far more suggestive than it was. Right, right. Boy, I mean, I didn't, I didn't show the whole video. Boy, have times changed. They couldn't even eat bananas hot back then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't show any of the Frankfurter stuff, but uh, it's fifteen minutes long. It's there's, fifteen there's minutes long. In there. Yeah. yeah. It could be our green screen. <laughs> Maybe next time. Maybe next time. All right, let's move on, Sean. I want to talk about how much time we got. Not a lot. Let's talk about Eli Drake. Uh, because you, I, I believe, I think it was you that. <laughs> I think you broke the story that Impact, Impact is trying to enforce a one year non compete. That's, that's the news coming out of it, yeah. And it's because he complained he didn't want to do an intergender match with Tessa Blanchard. Correct. Okay. Uh, I know this as an employer. That's going nowhere. Exactly. They are not going to enforce a, a non-compete. Eli Drake is going to do whatever the hell he wants. That's bullshit. Uh, and they should know better. Uh, let's move on from that. Uh, you broke another story this week, Sean. Yeah, as a tradition. <laughs> you broke the story this week that WWE used to require talent to give up their social media logins, but they, do, but they don't anymore. Explain so, that. Explain that. So I followed up on a report where Mike Johnson said that that's a current practice. I don't know that it was ever a regular practice. I know that Ryback claims it was and that he was asked to uh, as a part of a cease and desist a few months after he uh, left the company. What is going on over there? <laughs> just losing her shit. Losing her shit. It was so, yeah, I, 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 Okay, Melissa. Melissa. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Cut back to the cut screen. Cut back to the to the to the. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. The dozen or so people that I talked to across all brands said, "No, we've never been asked that." To the point to where one said, "Yeah, I even offered to give a person in social media my passcode." So they could post a tweet for me that I was supposed to. And they said, no, no, we can't do that either. Also, right. uh, our live stream went offline. Oh. Really? Mm -hmm. Went offline. Did it for real? Yep. What'd you do, Nigel? Uh, nothing. It, uh... it just went off by itself? Yeah, it's still streaming in Wirecast. Okay, am, well, we'll just keep going, I'm I guess. I'm recording and... a backup version of it oh, to the hard drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I've been yeah, doing yeah. that ever since we got up here. On, on, uh, on Twitter, it, it would appear, but my God. I, you know what? It's been doing this ever since we moved to this room. It's been doing this ever since Melissa has existed as a producer. In any no, way. it started when we moved up to this room. Okay, yeah. let, let's talk about I mean, we're almost done anyway. Let's talk about a couple more things. Um, AEW. What do you think of the Casino Battle Royal? I, it's different. I'm open to seeing how it ends up. 
they had to do something a little bit different. We'll see how it plays out, but I'm a sucker for Battle Royals. So if anyone hasn't heard, there's going to be 21 entrants. That's why they call it the Casino Battle Royal, and they're in Vegas, so I guess it makes sense. It starts with five uh, talent. After th every three minutes, five more enter together. Uh, and then the 21st guy comes in by himself. Uh, to me, it's very gimmicky, and it sounds like it's going to get messy. I understand where they're coming from. They want to have their own kind of character signature match, kind of like the Royal Rumble. Uh, and that's why they're trying it. Sounds like it's going to be messy. I'm going to tell you a, a, a little tidbit of news, Sean. You're going to Vegas. Uh, I don't know about that yet. I'll let you know soon. So God, it's <laughs> It's like a week and a half away. I can book the day before. No big deal. My God. I'll let you know soon. Several years ago, a uh, buddy of mine in the business, you know who he is, I think, he was promoting shows, and he came up with his own gimmick match for the same exact reason. He wanted to have a signature match. Yeah. So he came up with a gimmick match. In his match, it was a battle royal where you could only be eliminated by going under the bottom rope. Oh, wow. Wow. And he did it because he wanted to come up with something unique. Uh, with all due respect to him, it did not go well. You think? Did not go well. Uh, and so I think he did it once and never again, but uh, he gave it a shot. Sometimes these things don't go well, and when I envision five guys running out together to join a battle royal, it sounds like it's going to be messy to me. I don't see, I don't see that going well, but... I guess we'll see what happens. I so. guess we will. I'm open to it. I, I'm actually getting really excited for that weekend. There's just more and more people that have told me they're going to be there. So right. looking forward to that. Uh, what do you think about Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley in Saudi Arabia? Sure. Makes a lot of sense to me. Why not? I'm actually kind of intrigued by it, Sean. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of intrigued by it. Today. What's that? Was that reported today? No, but they're teasing it heavily on social media, and so people think that's going to happen. Yeah, okay, because, yeah, I've been out a little bit today. I was like, okay, did I miss something? But Yeah, it wasn't announced officially, no. That, that'd be fine. It'd be quick, and Goldberg likes that style. Lashley can work his style. Why not? I'm actually quite intrigued by it, man. Yeah. You know, I think it'd be very interesting. Uh, what do you think of Chris Jericho getting a shot at the IWGP title after he just lost the Intercontinental title in his last uh, New Japan match? I love it. It's such a troll move, and, hey, it speaks uh, positively to the possibility of AEW and New Japan working together, which I think they should be. And I have no issue with it either because it's business. And I, I've seen a few purists that are like, well, this is bullshit. He lost his last match and now he's getting a title shot. You got to remember for years and years and years in WWE, the Intercontinental title was used as a stepping stone to the main events, right? Mm -hmm. So years ago, you would lose the Intercontinental title. You'd go to the main event picture and eventually wrestle for the world title. Yeah. Really no difference, except I guess there's no build. Well, but, I hope that the build is literally them uh, saying he doesn't deserve this. He shouldn't be in this spot. He's not even with us. He lost his last match. That should be the build, that he is entitled and getting this, and uh, it, it shouldn't be happening that way. I think that's the right way to do it if he's coming off of a loss, because wins and losses do matter in New Japan. Right, right. And they should. That's all they got for you, man. Otherwise, uh, Jacob and I are... Uh, just gonna hang out a little bit. Oh, there you go. There you go. He's a real friendly sort too, Jacob. You know, he's yeah, he was very positive. We have a yeah, photo a... of him uh, doing this earlier. Two thumbs up. Oh, there, there's very a solid shot. Guy. Just in case anybody's not able to get a real good glimpse of what Jacob looks like, there is a shot, a solid shot of Jacob right there. Look at that. I'm really glad we're off. Look here at right that now. man. Look at that shot. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Until next time, we're out. Subscribe to Fightful on YouTube for the latest exclusive podcasts, interviews, and news across boxing, MMA, and pro wrestling.